Hi, my name is Chuck Cross. I'm a Senior Technical Service Advisor for Haldex Brake Corporation. This is an example of a Rockwell Quick Change Shoe Assembly. Although we all know that this is not the type of shoe or foundation brake that you get to work on. This is an example of what we typically work on out in the field. The shoes are dirty, greasy, dusty, worn, it's not an easy job, nor is it a clean job when we're replacing brake shoes. Results of uneven brake wear. Uneven brake wear will cause reduced stopping capability. The vehicle does not stop in as short a distance as it should. It can reduce fade resistance. It can lead to jackknife situations. There can be complaints of trailer surge. Reduced brake drum life can be a result. Uneven component wear which leads to lower component life. These all lead to increased maintenance, attention, and cost, and ultimately, safety is sacrificed. This is an example of a Meritor Q or a Q Plus style shoe. The difference is the Q Plus has a thicker lining. This is a tapered lining. Meritor shoes run a tapered block, which means we have a cam end and we have an anchor end. The normal wear pattern of a Meritor or a Rockwell style shoe is that the tapered shoe will wear evenly. So that when you go to do a reline, the wear pattern should be very similar to what we're showing in the picture. Eaton or Dana uses a single anchor pin style shoe. Thus, the block that they use on their shoe is different than what we use on a Meritor block. Eaton shoes have no taper to them at all. There is no anchor end nor cam end on the block. It is a straight piece of block on both sides. Shown is a picture of a 4311 and their version of the extended shoe is their 4709. The normal wear pattern for an Eaton shoe is to wear tapered. It's a straight block, but as it wears, it wears tapered as in the picture. The middle of the shoe will be thinner than the ends. This is the normal wear pattern for an Eaton shoe. Now we're going to look at some improper wear patterns. Things that you should notice when you go to do a brake job. As you pull off the drums, you should take a minute or two and inspect the lining prior to removing the shoes. In this example, we can tell that this is a Meritor style shoe. It's a, the old P-series style or pin style. And you'll notice that the cam end is thinner than the anchor end. This would be an indicator of an oversized brake drum. In this example of a wear pattern, you'll notice that the top shoe is hardly worn at all, and yet the bottom shoe is completely worn out. Again, this would be an indicator of worn camshaft bushings, possibly a broken return spring on the actuator, or bad hardware. Here is a wear pattern that would indicate a bell-mouthed drum, possibly oversized drum as well, but definitely bell-mouthed. This is an example of an improper wear pattern that would indicate a weak table. Many reliners of brake shoes will reuse the shoe cores and they have a process called coining it's where they take a 100 ton press and they recoin or they restamp the brake shoe, the steel, back to its original geometry because it was either stretched or bent. This causes the table to be very weak. As you can see, the wear pattern or what's being worn off the lining is the area that's directly above the web. This shoe core should have never been reused in the relining process. Haldex does not recoin brake shoes.
If a brake shoe needs to be recoined, we consider it a scrap shoe. This is an example of a lining wear off of a brake shoe that has a bad web or a bent web. This type of a wear pattern could be indicative of a shoe with a bent spider, or a twisted brake shoe, or an incorrect shoe for the application. This is a wear pattern that we often find in dump trucks and gravel haulers, people that are operating in sand. It shows a grooved brake drum. Here is a wear pattern off a brake shoe that would indicate a twisted brake shoe, a poor bearing adjustment, or possibly worn camshaft bushings, or a combination of any of these events. This is an example of a brake shoe that is heat checked. Notice the cracking along the surface of the brake shoe. Again, this could be caused by a dragging brake or a misapplication of lining which exceeds the heat range under which the vehicle is being used. In this picture we're showing a brake shoe with a crack along the vertical surface of the shoe. This could be caused by a weak shoe table or possibly raised rivet holes from the reline process. Now we're looking at a brake shoe that has what we call cooked lining. This can be caused again by a dragging brake, an actuator that's not fully releasing that's allowing the brake to drag, driver abuse, or again improper lining for the application or vocation in which this vehicle is being used. Here's an example of a brake shoe that shows a crack, a vertical crack, that is usually caused by rust jacking. Rust jacking is when water gets between the block and the steel of the shoe and starts to rust. In the hall decks relining process, we check for rust jacking on every brake shoe that we have returned to our reline centers. If we noticed rust jacking and it's significant, we scrap the core. If you are noticing this type of vertical cracking on your shoes, there's a good chance that the reliner that you're using is not checking for rust jacking prior to relining the brake shoe. Here is an example of a glazed brake shoe. You notice the shiny spots across the surface of the block. In many cases, this is, ap this is where lining has been put on the wrong application, or it could be underworked or low heat applications for the brake itself. In this example, we're showing where the block itself has cracked. In many cases, this can be caused by the bent shoe or the table of the shoe not being straight. This can also be caused by incorrect pressure on the mechanical river that is used to install the rivets. For more information, please visit us at haldex.com.